So we call this the above the line and below the line training. Above the line and below the line training. People who win in life, in every area of life, operate above the line. I'm gonna show you the three components of above the line and the three components of below the line. People who operate below the line really rest in mediocrity or even worse. We're gonna stay above the line. Let me teach it to you. The first thing is people who are above the line are intentional. Now I want you to think about, I'm gonna give you a definition for intentional. It means a 50,000 foot view of where we're going. So I know where we're going. We're going way down there. I'm clear on where it is. It's the overall, like the navigation system. You can consider it the vision of where you're going. People who win in athletics are very intentional about what they're going after. Consider it like a vision, okay? The second one sounds similar, but it's different, and I'll explain. The second one is on purpose. This is a five-foot view. This is a 50,000 foot view. This is what I have to do right now, right in front of me, every single day, every single day, okay? So where we're going, big picture, what we do every day. The third component of above the line training is how we do it, and we do it in a skillful manner. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna relate this to a person, a player on a team in athletics, and I want you to relate it to whatever sport it is that you play, whatever business that you're in, or whatever endeavor that you're in the middle of right now. So we'll use, say, a receiver, a football player who is a receiver. So his intentionality is to be an all-district receiver and to win the district title. Those are his intentions. That's the 50,000-foot view. It's what drives him every day. Want to be all-district? Want to win the district championship, okay? That's the 50,000-foot view. So on purpose is all the things he has to do every single day to get to the vision. They are indeed linked with the vision. So he's got to get in the right stance. He's got to be the defender off the line. He's got to run a route the, the correct way. He's got to catch the ball the right way. Speaking of catch, that's a skill he has to learn. He's running down the field, ball comes over his shoulder, he catches it right here. This is called unskilled. This is what you did when you were in fourth grade in the backyard with your dad. This is unskilled. When the ball comes over, it hits the weakest part of your hands, your pinkies. This is skilled. It's the index finger and the thumbs, which are the strongest part of your hand. Skilled, unskilled. That's one example. Ball comes over and you miss it here, the ball bounces up. That's bad for you and good for the defense. You miss it here, it goes straight down. So here you miss, it goes straight down. Here you miss, it goes straight up. Here's another thing. I catch the ball like this, I catch it at chest level. I turn my hands and catch it here, I catch it at the highest point not allowing the defender to make a play. I could go on and on and on, but you see the difference between skill and unskill? So I want to be an all-district receiver. I want to win the district championship. I have to get my stance right, beat defenders off the line, and when I practice, I practice skillfully. This is what happens when you're an above-the-line athlete. It works for you as an individual, your team, and indeed the whole program. So let me tell you where most people are. Most people are in that giant pool we call mediocrity, and they operate below the line. Let me show you what those look like. The first one is impulse. Impulse. If someone walked up to me right now and had a hot match going and put it up to my arm when I was talking to you, I wouldn't think about it and say, you know, I think there's some heat. No, I would just jump. I would immediately operate off of impulse. In other words, the way I feel right now. People who lose operate off of impulse. Because what if you don't feel like working out? What if you don't feel like giving your best effort? What if you don't feel like studying for that test? What if you don't feel like getting up and going to church that morning? Everybody listening to me right now has probably not felt at some point in time like going to church, but you were glad you went when you heard the message that day. That's because you operated off of intentionality, not impulse. And people who lose operate off of impulse. The second component for below the line living is autopilot. We might as well admit it, we've all been there. We've all been on autopilot. You know what that is. I don't even have to give you an explanation. It's just kind of going through the motions. Whether it's athletics, whether it's church, family, business, we've all been on autopilot at some point in time. It's what average people do. The third component for below the line is resistance. 
resistant. In other words, I know what I should do, I'm just not going to. I understand the teacher's asking me to do this, not gonna do it. I understand the boss wants me to do this, not gonna do it. I know mom and dad have told me to take out the trash, not gonna do it. People who live below the line operate off of impulse, autopilot, and resistance. This loses, this wins. This is a component of the vehicle we'll be bringing to Cypress Christian for the athletic department. By the way, you can always recognize below the line people because they operate with BCD. BCD. They blame others, complain about circumstances, and defend themselves when things don't go right. This is the overview of above the line versus below the line training. And it's one component of the vehicle that you'll have at Cypress Christian School.